so I think we're ready to get started with our paint. My paints today are the Winsor Newton Cotman watercolor set. This comes with 12 colors and it doesn't have a dark brown like you're going to see in this reference photo. And so what we'll do is we'll mix the ultramarine blue and the burnt sienna to get a nice rich brown. Now I'm going to begin with the background. In my reference photo, this is interesting, the body is all blurred out into the gray background and I want to try to imitate that with my painting. The best way to get soft blurred edges in watercolor is to use the wet and wet technique. So I'm painting with clean water carefully around these ears because I want those to be in sharp focus contrasting with the blurry background. So for now I'm just painting clean water all around the background and also overlapping into the body where it's blurry in the photo on there. All right, so we have a nice watered down background here. It's just glistening, but not sopping wet. Now I'm gonna stick with my size eight round brush and very quickly mix up some brown using that combination that I mentioned of burnt sienna and ultramarine. Now I'm mixing my paints after I wet the paper, but if you are concerned about your paper drying out, Go ahead and pre-mix your paints before you even start wetting the background. All right, I'm dropping that in almost up to my pencil line and I'm just gonna let it blur out. I want it a little darker here where I see a shadow in the mouse's body. Painting around the ear. Remember we want the ear to be nice and crisp in focus. Then I just soften that edge slightly. Want it to be really blurry. Taking a darker mixture, more heavy on the ultramarine side for this shadow shape along the neck. And then grabbing more pure burnt sienna and filling in this shape. But you can see I left this lighter because there's a little bit of a highlight there. Painting right up to those ears. My paper dried up quite a bit, so I'm gonna re-wet it again here. And actually rinse my brush really quick because I'm gonna make some, or I'm gonna take some Payne's Gray for the background and just drop that in. And I want this color to go right up next to the edge that we just painted. And then I'm gonna take my brush, gently soften that edge. Make sure there's not water on your brush, too much water, otherwise that'll leave blooms there. and then wrap that gray all the way around the ear. We're really trying to merge the background with the body shape of the mouse. It needs to be soft and indistinct. And I'm adding in some alizarin crimson adding in this alizarin crimson for more of a reddish hint to the fur. And I think that extra layer is adding some nice dimension and color to our little mouse. Okay, really quickly, I'm gonna just re-wet this area and drop in some Payne's Gray for a rich dark shadow under the mouse. Because the face is more in focus, I can just dab gently along this dry edge to indicate some fur texture along the mouth. And when it's dry, when we're painting wet and dry, we don't have to worry about the paint just flowing away uncontrollably. And let's just soften that edge 
Notice I switched brushes here. My other one still had the gray on it. And then I want to hint at this little pink foot. So I'm dropping in some alizarin right in the background here to suggest that tiny little foot. And then some more gray all the way up to my tape here. <laughs> When you're painting something that's blending into the background where you want to lose those edges, it is so helpful to start with the background. All right, so I'm just dabbing in some black to darken up the shadow a little more. and painting in those little shadows between the toes. This is where we get to paint the details of the head. So I'm switching to my size two Escoda round brush. Now it's time to get to the details. I'm gonna paint the inside of the ear with water first. While I'm at it, I'm just gently softening that edge that maybe got a little bit fuzzy. And then I'm taking a mixture of yellow ochre and alizarin crimson, very watered down, and just dropping that in. Notice I left this lighter edge along here. I didn't paint all the way up to the edge. That's because I want to leave a highlight there. And then we'll do the same thing for the other ear. Paint inside of it with water, glossy wet, and then take your mixture of yellow ochre and alizarin and paint that in. The goal here is to make the ears look paper thin and transparent, like the light is making its way through them. And so I've mixed up my brown using black and alizarin crimson and a little bit of burnt sienna. And now I'm painting in the ear. Watered my brush down a little bit. And I'm adding a little bit of a shadow on the top. And I'm along the right side. If you're struggling with working this tiny, by all means, paint a little bit larger. It's always risky when you're working this small. And now I've taken some watered down burnt sienna and I'm just adding a little bit of a shadow inside of that ear that we painted. Just for some more dimension and to make it feel a 3D. And a little bit of black here to darken this ear up one more time. If you're intimidated by all the different colors you see in your mouse, don't be, just work in layers. I'm gonna start with a yellow ochre layer and this will serve as my base color. I'm not gonna paint with pure yellow ochre because there are some areas in the muzzle and around the eyes where I see actually some blue where the light is shining on the fur and we see these little hints of blue. So I'm working fast and painting with wet yellow ochre, very watered down on my dry paper. And then while that's still wet, rinse my brush and grab a little bit of blue, also watered down. And I'm gonna let that go right up next to the yellow ochre. We call that charging two colors into each other. And it looks a little strange at first but once we add all the other colors on the top and some more texture, it's gonna look really neat, I think. And I see that cool gray underneath the mouth here and on the top of the nose. Okay, switching back to my smaller brush, 
Got to be realistic here and remember how small I'm working. Along this side of the face, there's just dark brown. And I'm being a little more specific with my brush strokes, painting wet and dry, allowing it to look carefully placed and fuzzy. Can take some more burnt sienna, mix in a little bit of blue for a nice rich brown. And now I'm painting that fur overlapping the ear. Just using the tip of my brush with very light brush strokes. Painting a dark shadow under this, under this eye. And while that paint's wet, you can take the tip of your brush and pull the wet paint out over the areas that haven't yet been painted. And that creates texture across the surface of the lighter areas and helps meld the shapes that you're putting down. So now we're on our second layer. We put down that first wash of yellow ochre and blue. And now we're just starting to begin, starting to add some detail. Beginning to paint around the eye and some more fur texture. If you're struggling to get your bristles fine enough for this, you can splay the bristles of your brush by kind of smashing it down on your palette. You can see it separates those bristles and allows you to paint even smaller. Just make sure you have enough paint on there. Sometimes it dries out really fast. So quickly painting on some fur across the top of the head. And then I'm using some more water on my paint here and just defining the edge of the head with a little bit more of a wash rather than specific brush strokes. And that dark shape is helping the head stand out some more. It will look better as soon as we add the eyes. So if you're looking for some instant gratification, you feel like your painting is super ugly right now, you're not sure you want to continue, try adding the eyes and I think maybe that will help motivate you to keep going because suddenly it comes to life. So we'll do that next. All right, so while that is all drying, before we come back into the muzzle and the nose, let's go ahead and paint the eyes. And with your richly pigmented black on the tip of your brush, just paint in all of the darkest areas that you see in the eye. Watch out for that highlight. Along the rim of the eye, there might be some areas that are catching the light too, so watch for those because those can really add a lot of beauty to your painting. Make it look even more like it's glistening and shiny. reflecting the environment around him. Something that helps make your eye look like it's embedded in the head and attached is to take some of that black paint and pull it out into fur texture. And that really just helps connect it so the eye doesn't look like a button or a cutout. 
adding some turquoise blue inside of the highlight. And then scrubbing out some of that because I realized that the shape of my eye was a little too tall. Mixing up some more of my brown using burnt sienna and ultramarine and adding some more fur. Just be patient, work in layers. Use a soft, gentle swiping motion with your brush. Very, very light. Never apply too much pressure. In the center of the head, I see more of the bluish hint as the fur turns black or dark gray. So I'm grabbing some ultramarine and painting that on right here in the center. Still have to control how much water is on my brush by dabbing it on my paper towel. It's a fine balance when you're working with a brush this small because it dries out so fast and then that stops the paint flow. But then <laughs> if you have too much water on it, you can't control where the paint is going. So this does take some practice. I'm going to take some yellow ochre into the center of the head, just kind of warming this up with a yellowish hint. And then the nose is much more pink, even a little bit of purple in there. So I'm going to use my Lizard and Crimson first. and start to paint the nose. So a little highlight here on the tip of the nose that'll be just a little lighter. And then I'm grabbing my black mixture and scumbling with the tip of my brush so that there's some texture, this black all around the nose. Just study your reference photo and wherever you see darker values, don't be afraid to go darker. And of course, as it starts to dry, it's gonna get lighter and you might be frustrated because you thought it was dark enough and you have to go back in and add another layer. But that's okay, do whatever you need to, to be happy with your painting. Don't give up on it too, see it through to the end. I'm taking more water in my brush and blending out some of that detail that I put down as I felt like it was a little too detailed. Now the, the little paw right here, or foot, has some little hints of pink between the toes. So I'm just dabbing some of that color on. While it's still wet, you can push and pull the paint. I'm even gonna drop in some purple. just to help that nose get a little darker. I'm 
the center of the head there dried sufficiently too that I could add some more detail. Let's do the other eye, grabbing some rich black from my palette and I'm going to paint ever so carefully these tiny little details. Once again, I got to watch for that highlight and make sure that I preserve it. You'll want to use a very tiny brush for this. And if you mess up an edge like I just did right there, don't panic. But you'll want to fix it while it's still wet. So I just rinsed my brush, dab it on the paper, paper towel, and gently lift that away. And then just continue. Seed it through to the end. With watercolor, it goes through so many ugly phases. <laughs> I think, especially if you're working in layers like this, that you just have to give yourself the patience and the time to get through all of the layers. And then you can decide. Adding some black fur texture on the top of the head, again, using the finest tip of my brush. Very, very gentle scrubbing motion. And then I'm dry brushing. My, dry, my brush is mostly dry. Some more texture across the surface. There's just a hint of black still on my brush and I'm just scumbling it on, allowing the texture of the paper to pick that up and to miss certain areas so that it looks like fuzzy fur. Then I'm going to grab a little bit of blue, just like on the other side, the highlight has some blue in it. Paint that in. So the highlight is not pure white. It's just a little more complex than that. Needed to go darker under the eye. Pull some of that hair out and away. And keep in mind too, we still haven't done the whiskers and that's gonna add a lot of realistic detail to this. But once again, I encourage you to stick with it and finish it. Darkening up my shadow here because I felt like it was looking a little bit too bland. Anything, if it's not looking realistic, check your values and maybe you just don't have enough contrast. Of course, when you apply a dark color like that in something that's supposed to be blurry, you'll need to soften out the edge. Now, I just added way too much water there. What that did was it started to push the paint away. So I had to go back in and remove some of that again and then add the pigment back in. It's a tricky balance for sure. All right, so we're gonna to need to let this dry before we add 
the whiskers. Just darkening one more layer over here and adding some washes of color all across it just to kind of smooth out the design. If you accidentally paint over some of your values and they become too dark, don't hesitate to go back in with a clean damp brush and scrub back some of that light. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm scrubbing out some of the paint to lighten it up again. And I already like that much better. I'm gonna go over the little muzzle one more time. All right, so let's let that dry and then we will add whiskers. Now that the paint is dry, we can add some final details like little white whiskers. So on my palette over here, I actually have some white gouache already. You'll wanna make sure that your paint is thick enough that it will go on nice and bright white. So make sure you're scrubbing that so that you have a really good, almost pasty consistency. And it needs to be watery enough that it will go down smooth on the surface of your paper. So I'll notice I'm twisting my brush so that it comes to a nice fine point. And now with my brush fully loaded, I can go ahead and paint on some long whiskers. If it's catching on the surface of the paper, you do need to add just a tiny bit more water or just gently dip your brush in the water. Use your tiniest brush for these details. And try to do each whisker all in one swooping motion. On the other side, rinsing my brush, I'm gonna do a little bit more, a few little black whiskers. And they're not gonna all fit on this tiny little paper, which is okay. So they'll go off the edge. The left side needs a few black whiskers too, so we'll add those in. Mouse has some multicolored whiskers. And then with the muzzle dry, I can go ahead and add some more detail, some more of a scumbling with my brush for fur along the muzzle. Darken up where needed to get your values correct. <laughs> and there we have our little finished mouse. Truthfully, this little guy took quite a bit longer than I anticipated. But if you decide to go this detailed, then yeah, you can probably expect to spend quite a bit of time on it. But he was a lot of fun. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching.